Now for the next gate we're looking at is a spastic gate. Now spastic gate is also known as well hemiplegic gate, and I got to even see that people know it with this hemiplegic gate even more than the spastic gate. Okay, but I searched online spastic gates they were like little pictures when i search hemiplegic gates there were a lot of pictures all right so we get to look at this spastic gate from the definition to the characteristics definition characteristics causes what could cause a spastic gait we we'll look at the diagnosis and the possible treatment for this spastic gait okay so this spastic gait it's a type of walking abnormality, right? Type of walking abnormality, which is characterized by a stiff and awkward movement. Okay, so it's it's often result from what neurological conditions affecting the brain or spinal cord. All right, characteristics now. The stiff movement. Can you see how the person is moving? Raise their leg, and before they take their leg forward, they have to like. Corner it. Do you understand? I have to be like in a semi cycle. Okay. So um, the legs appear stiff and they move with difficulties. Scissoring. The legs may cross each other in a scissors like fashion due to excessive muscle tone. Toe walking. So walking on the toes or the balls of the feet because the muscles at the back of the feet are tight. Okay. Decrease arm swinging. The arms may not swing normally while walking again. Okay. A slow labored steps. So each step is taken with what effort and caution. Okay. Causes. It could be due to cerebral palsy. This now is just talking about the disease that are associated with this type of gait. So it could be cerebral palsy. So a common cause of spastic gait in children is usually resulting from what brain damage at birth or early in life. Okay. So it could be multiple sclerosis. This is a condition that affects the central nervous system, leading to muscle stiffness and spasticity. Okay, spinal cord injury. So trauma to the spinal cord can now disrupt the normal control of muscle tone. Stroke. Damage to the brain as a result of a stroke. That's from a stroke can lead to a spasticity on one side of the body. All right, like that's hemiplegic. That's why they call it hemiplegic. Can you see this side that is ash? It's just this side that is affected. Can you see the leg and the arms are affected? That's why they call it hemiplegic one side. Okay. There could be hereditary or spastic paraplegia. This one is a genetic condition that affects the spinal cord and causes what progressive or spasticity. Diagnosis. So clinical observation. This way you are just uh, diagnosis is confirmed, right? So once you know the characteristics of a spastic gait. Okay, know the characteristics of a spastic gait. Once you clinically observe the patient, if you access their gait and their movement, you just simply know. All right, the neurological examination this is when you have evaluate for muscle tone, reflexes, and coordination. For imaging studies, you can now do MRI or CT scan just to identify any structural abnormalities in the brain or spinal cord. Okay, then electromyography. This one is to measure the muscle activity and identify any abnormal muscle contraction. Okay, so this is a spastic gait that we spoke about. Okay, spastic gait. One side of the body is affected. All right. So what is the treatment? So physical therapy. We are doing some exercises to improve flexibility, strength, and coordination. Medications. So antispasticity word medications such as what baclofen. Or botulinum or toxin injections can all help. Orthopedic interventions like braces, orthotics, or surgical procedures can all correct what deformities and improve mobility of the patient. Okay. Occupational therapy. So as you are assisting the patient to their daily activities, okay, and you can now adapt to the environment just to improve the function of it. Okay, so for conclusion, so that is spastic gait can significantly impact somebody's life. So if you see them with it, if there's anything you can do to assist, like on the general now, if you can assist them with their physical activities, daily activities, 
always do. All right. So that's it for spastic gait, also known as what hemiplegic gait.